All right, good evening, everybody, once again. Thank you for the opportunity. So we would be discussing Amos chapter four uh, tonight. Uh, we have been looking at chapter one through chapter three, and we've seen how uh, Amos, the prophet, was actually prophesying to the people, you know, uh, the nation, different nations, speaking to them about what God has actually said, you know, we know a prophet is to speak what God has actually asked him to speak. So today we want to look at, and you know, previously in the last chapter, uh, chapter three, we'll see how he has actually uh, mentioned some irregularities that were actually happening, you know, among the, the nation of uh, uh, Israel in particular, their sins and all of that. So today we want to direct our attention to, you know, the women as the women, uh, which were the people referred to as the cows of Bashan or the the kind of Bashan. So we would read as we continue, and uh, we will try to do some uh, explanation. Okay, let us read verses one to three. Uh, Brother Donald, please can you help us read verses one to three? Yes, my brother. Amos chapter 4, verse 1. Hear this word, you kind of Bashan, that are in the mountains of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, bring and let us drink. The Lord God hath sworn by his holiness that, lo, the day shall come upon you, that he will take you away with hooks, and your posterity with fish hook, and ye shall uh, go out at the breaches, every cow at that which is before her, and ye shall, and you shall cast them into the palace, said the Lord. Come, oh, verse three, okay. All right. That's same as uh, verse one yes. through three. Yes, thank you very much for just one, two, three. All right, so we see the cows of Bashan, or like the KJV uh, uh, have it, it says, uh, um, the kind of Bashan. And from what we see in these three verses, we see that they are actually insatiable. You know, they are not uh, satisfied with what they have. And we see certain things that they were actually doing. Before we go into that, I just want to say something about um, uh, Bashan. It's a place in the east of Jordan River. So it's a place in Samaria. And so the cows of Bashan is actually if a phrase or a statement that is used to refer to the noble uh, wives of, you know, Israel or the, the, the wealthy women that we have in Samaria. And from what they were doing, you would be able to see very clearly that these people were actually oppressing a lot of people. One of the things they were doing, actually living in Samaria, they were oppressing the poor and the needy. You see that clearly in verse one, they were oppressing the poor, the cross and the needy. And they were actually craving out for, you know, pleasures, drinks, wine, and all of that. You see that in verse 2. And if you go to verse 3, you will see that all of these things, the Bible says that um, um, going through verse 2, the Bible says that the Lord has sworn by his holiness, behold, the days come upon you when he will take you away with fish hooks and your posterity with fish hook. You will go out through broken walls, each one straight ahead of her, and you will be cast into Hammon, says the Lord. So all of these things they were doing that they think they are actually oppressing people, they're doing a lot of wickedness, you know, they would actually suffer painful deportation into foreign land as a result of these things. So uh, basically that's what uh, uh, verses one to three is talking about. We have the, the, the women, the wealthy ones who were actually oppressing the poor and the needy ones in the uh, society in Samaria in particular, and um, they were referred to as the kind or cows of Bashan. Actually, kind is an old word that you use for, as in a plural word for cows, like when you have plural of cow, you can either call them kind or um, cow. So basically that's what we have there. So are there any comments on, on these verses before we go further? Uh, yeah. Um, I would point out to a couple of references. The first one would be Amos 6. Amos 6 discusses the uh, mountain of Samaria. 
I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, Amos 6, 1. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which is named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. Now, the reason that is important is because you'll remember the woman of Samaria, uh, she herself in John 4, 20, uh, actually makes the reference that our fathers worshiped on this mountain. So this mountain is, is being uh, referenced as a mountain of shame and, and unrighteousness. So you'll see that reference. I could read that from the woman of the well in John 4, 20, but uh, you'll remember the story uh, as Jesus confronted the woman of the well regarding the mountain that she worships on cannot be the righteous mountain of God which uh, Jesus corrects her, referring to Jerusalem itself. All right, all right, thank you. Thank you for that. A any other comments on, on um, the verse, verses one to three, on what we've said so far, questions or comments? Okay, so um, let's move to the next. Um, we have verse four to five. Uh, Brother Green, can you please um, read that for us? Yes, my brother. Uh, verse number four. It says, "Come to Bethel, uh, and and transgress at Gilgal. Multiply transgression, and bring your sacrifices every morning, and your tithes after three deep years, and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, and proclaim and publish." the free offering for this like of you, O ye children of Israel, says the Lord. All right, thank you for that. Now, here is Amos using sarcasm to actually call upon the wicked of Israel to continue in their unauthorized acts of worship. Um, when you read it, it would appear that, oh, is he calling them to come and actually worship? Remember that Jerusalem was actually where God chose that people should worship him in the Old Testament. And you remember that? And uh, along the line, you know, as a result of their disobedience, you know, they had to begin idol worship. I think they had one place in Bethel and in Dan where they had to go, you know, the king, then I think it was Jeroboam who said, no, you don't have to go to Jerusalem. You just have, you can, you can actually, you know, stay here and worship God, contrary to what, you know, God has actually given to them. So uh, Amos now is actually using a sense of sarcasm to call upon them and say, okay, come, come over to, uh, to Bethel and transgress, continue your sin and keep sinning, you know. Come to Gilgal and multiply your transgressions. You know, this is not actually a, a statement that is to be taken, uh, the way it was said, but we must understand that uh, it is sarcasm that is being used. So a people that has no respect, gratitude, or regard for God's law could care less about worship the way God prescribed. So like I said, God told them, this is how you must worship me. This is how you must do. You can see, he said, bring your tithe every three days, uh, offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, you know, proclaim and announce the free will offering. For this you love. These are contrary to how God wanted them to do it. If you go back to Deuteronomy, Exodus, and you see how God gave them these instructions, God was very particular, explicit with all of these guidelines and directions, but they actually, you know, changed everything and all of that. So you see those areas where they actually worship their false gods, you know, Amos is calling them, you continue and, and, and do all of this. So, so these um, self-centered individuals like the, the, the nation of Israel, Samaria, uh, are they actually called to the centers of their idolatrous worship, Bethel, Gilgal, in order to continue their illegal and self-prescribed worship over there. And, you know, 11 offerings of thanksgiving, proclaimed free will offerings, and all of this, you know, was not to please God, but their own uh, uh, self. Now, if you go, remember in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 and 9, um, Brother Stevenson, can you please help us with, with that um, passage? Oh, okay, we have it on the screen. We have it on the screen. Um, Matthew 15, 8 and 9, Jesus was actually talking. Um, yeah, you can read, no problem. Brother Stevenson, help us read. Matthew 15, 8 and 9. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honored me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. But in vain 
do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Thank you very much. Um, you see that uh, Jesus Christ was actually talking there, making reference to Isaiah, and he was like, oh, you know, your prophets, Isaiah spoke well of them, you know, not well in the real sense. He said, they actually draw near with their lips. They think they want to worship God, you know, but their heart is far from God. In vain, they worship God. Why? Because they are teaching for doctrines, the precepts of men. We can see that clearly demonstrated in, in this very passage. All of these things were actually worship. They were actually worshiping God. Actually, that's one thing you need to know. You know, there are, people can actually worship God in different ways. If you look at um, Acts of Apostles, when, when Paul was actually in the city of Athens, he said, got to a point he saw people worshiping God to an own that they don't know and Paul said oh this same God that you worship that you don't know I have actually come to proclaim unto you so you see people can actually worship God ignorantly you can actually worship God um, in vain and this is an example when people begin to teach things that you know are not in line circumventing God's commandments you know you're supposed to take the Lord's Supper on Sunday. You're taking it on a different day. And, and so many of that kind, you know, you're actually not practicing the right thing. So unauthorized acts of worship never please God and are always designed to meet man's expectations and not God's expectations. Any comments or questions on verses 4 and verse 5? Yeah, brother Leslie, you remember back in chapter 3, if we look back at chapter three, those last two verses, this is uh, two reasons that God lists why he's going to visit Israel uh, in his anger. In chapter three and verse 14 and 15, he talks about he's going to visit the transgression upon Israel. He's going to visit the altars of Bethel. And like you said, that worship began with Jeroboam in 13 chapter 12. God, has, as you mentioned, has always been concerned about people worshiping him right, always. And, and Bethel and Dan were two places that were not authorized by God for the places to be worshiped. So God said, I'm gonna visit you in my anger because of your worship. And then in verse 15, because of their abuse of their wealth. You know, wealth and prosperity, it tends to cause people to forget God and have pride. So they had started worshiping wrong. And not only are they worshiping wrong, they're living it up. You know, they're not concerned about God's house. So God said in verse 15, I will smite the winter house and with the summer house and the house of ivory shall perish and the great houses shall have an end, said the Lord. And so anytime you and I practice unauthorized worship, a worship that is designed to please yourself and not God, you can prepare uh, to meet God. And that's something we see throughout Old Testament history, Nadab and Abihu, uh, Jeroboam in 1 Kings 12. You remember uh, Saul in 1 Samuel 15, unauthorized worship. So God has never, ever, ever, never left it up to us to worship how we want to worship or to worship uh, to design to just be entertainment to please ourselves. So we got to make sure we take that serious. And if I could go back I want to go I want to mention something that you brought up in in the first few chat verses if I could Amos 4 1 through 3 because and this is to our men to the men now notice as brother Leslie said these are the women of the masters these are women who are running their husbands these are women who are having their husbands these masters out providing for them out uh working for them at the and getting them what they want at the sake of being spiritual i want to make sure we get that these are women who who, who are being who are disrespectful uh these are women who are not quiet these are women who are not modest and they are running their husbands and uh, trying to keep up with a lifestyle. They are demanding that their husbands keep up with a lifestyle at the sake of spirituality. And so God says, I'm going to deal with that as well. And so men, I'm going to say this, men, we need to be men. You need to, be, you need to lead your house spiritually and understand that you, you, you have to put God first and God's ways first, always. And uh, then you let the chips fall with it where they may after that. But these women were out of control. And that's why he's calling them the kind of Bashan, because they were more concerned about their wealth, their lifestyle. And these men were more concerned about their wives, wealth and lifestyle than they were the things of God. And that's always going to be a problem. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, any other comments or, or questions or thoughts on the verses we've read? All right, so 
Um, we would move now to a different section of the chapter where we now have various ways that God has actually um, dealt with the children of Israel, but they actually refuse to listen to correction. And you see how adamant a people could actually be, despite all of the, uh, uh, the lessons that God was actually trying to teach them. I said the other day that I, I believe that the pandemic is actually a way God is wanting to teach us lessons, you know, and people need to learn, I believe so. So uh, from what we see in, in Amos now, you see that God actually gave them a lot of time to repent. It, 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 you know, there were a lot of punishment, but they refused. We shall see that. Uh, and some of the things that God actually did was when famine, he brought drought, he brought, he brought pestilence, he brought plague and war, earthquake, you know, a lot of things like this we would see in the chapter, yet the, the, the nation refused to repent. Um, let us read verse six. We're going to take it one after the other. Verse six. Um, Brother Dave, can you help us with that? Yes. Um, verse six. Yes, sir. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in, your, in all your cities and one of bread in all of your places. Have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord? And also I have withholding the rain from me when there were yet three just, months to the heart. Just verse six. Am I Sorry. Thank you. Just what verse you six. Just oh, verse okay. six. Yeah, thank you. So um, in this place, you see that um, God was speaking, you know, through the prophet. He said, I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places, yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. So the idea of clean teeth, just like we can see, it refers to uh, the time of famine. That's what it actually indicates. It, it clean, clean teeth and want of bread indicates a time of famine where there was you know, shortage of food. There was no food, you know. Remember the time of... Um, um, Jake, um, Joseph, when there was famine and the brothers had to come down to Egypt to buy food, you know, famine is always spoken of oftentimes in the Bible, even in the New Testament, you see in Acts chapter 11, verse 20, um, 27 to 30, when Agabus came to prophesy in, in Antioch that there's going to be a famine throughout the world, and then the brethren in Antioch actually contributed to help the brethren in Judea as a result of the famine. So, you know, this is a period of lack of, you know, food in the nation or among the people. And God actually is saying that he, he actually brought this upon them to teach them a lesson. He said, yet they have refused to return to him. That's what God is saying. You see that? So basically, um, uh, these people are very adamant and they do not want to listen to anything. Um, let us read verses 7 to 8. Um, uh, Sister Stevenson, can you help us with that? Verses 7 to 8. Okay, verse 7. And also I have withholden the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Thank you very much. Now, if you see, this is another punishment that God has actually gave to them. You know, we just talked about the period of famine. Now, this is a time of um, drought when there was actually uh, no water, and then everywhere was, you know, there was no rain. So God brought this situation. This is also very common in the Old Testament. You see several times when God was uh, said there will be no rain for a particular period of time. Now this happened to the nation and they had to, you know, it was not raining in a place. It was raining in the other place. These people will go over to this place to get water. At the same time, you know, all of these were not even enough for them. Yet, this did not teach them enough lesson to say, oh, let us return to God. Let us go back to our God. So this should, you know, it would have diminished a lot of things, destroyed their crops. Of course, if you don't have rain, you know, farmers know what that means. 
they're always praying for rain, uh, you know, so they can actually have their crops, you know, wet and all of that. But if all of these are not there, you don't have water to drink, you don't have water for your crops, and a lot of things are actually, in fact, water is life. <laughs> so uh, basically, all of these things are absent, yet the people did not return to God. Yeah, before we open it up for comment, let's take verse 9. Uh, Brother Coffee, can you help us with verse 9? Of course. And I have uh, smitten you with the blasting and mildew in your, in your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees. Increase the, the, the palmer worms and devour them, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. All right. Thank you very much. Now, from this place, you see that this is another uh, um, trouble, another punishment that God gave to them, and that is um, pestilence. You know, from what you see, God said that there was a wind and mild dew fungus that actually destroyed their gardens. You know, a lot of um, um, fig trees, uh, mild dew, and, and locusts actually came in to devour their crops their gardens, their vineyards, their fruit trees, due to their transgressions, all of these things were sent by God to destroy all of these. Now, the Lord sent these things among the field so that, you know, the people can actually repent, but they continue to reject this request. They continue to reject this request for repentance. And, you know, the text in each of these instances indicates that the people were told, likely by a prophet, that God had actually caused the events you know, due to their sinful life. So basically, God is saying, I brought all of this. You have refused to return to me. You have refused to return to me. Definitely the people knew that, oh, God was punishing us and they ought to have actually repented, but they actually do not repent. Before we go over to verse 9, any comments on the, on, on verse 10 rather, any comments on the verses we've actually read? Hey, Brother Leslie, it, it, Brother Leslie, and good job, brother, good teaching. You know, it reminds me, I'm just going back in Old Testament history. You remember the children of Israel when in Elijah's days on Mount Carmel, you know, as you had some of Israel. Uh, prophets and remember this was Israel uh, Ahab is of Israel Jezebel is of Israel and they're worshiping the god Baal which is a god the rain god the sun god and God through the prophet Elijah caused it not to rain for three and a half years you know and here they are on Mount Carmel and and, and you you see Elijah lets them go first cry out to their god the god of Baal this foolish worship that they're doing jumping up and down and nothing happens and then Elijah gets on the scene and we know who the the, the true and the living god is and God answers and uh, he, he takes the sacrifice uh, and then eventually he calls it the rain. And it's just, it's just amazing, uh, brother, as we, we look back at this, the love, you know, that God has as he reaches out, you know, with, with, with things that only the God of heaven can, can do. You know, he feeds us. And as you mentioned, you know, water is life and God controls that. And God gives you all these signs and, and you still fuse uh, uh, to recognize him and to turn and repent. And so as you're reading this, brother, I'm just, and I'm looking at my life, you know, I'm just reminded, brother, of, of how much God, how, how much he loves us. And how much he reaches for us, even through through the trials and the tribulations of our life. But we got to be listening. You know, you said something earlier, you know, uh, you know, 9-11. We can talk about 9-11 in the United States and, and certain things and, and COVID. You know, of, of course, there's no prophet today that can, can tell, like Amos told us, this is why it happens. But I think we should look at these issues that happen in our society, in our life, to ask ourselves, if this is God talking, am I listening? See, I can't pinpoint what exactly God is doing. Did God bring the COVID? I can't say that in particular today, why certain things happen in our life. But the question can always be asked, if God is talking through, to me through my calamity, am I listening? Are there sins that I need to repent of in my life? And that's even with death. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much for that comment. Yeah, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, any other comments or a question concerning the passages we've read. All right. If not, we would move to. Okay, Brother Coffee. Um, yes, it was um, interesting that Brother uh, Stevens' comment on, on last night 
um, I taught Luke chapter 13. And in verse number two, uh, well, first of all, in verse number one, where it says they're presented at the season that I told him that the, um, that the Galatians, um, whose blood um, Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice, and Jesus answered and said unto them, suppose ye that the Galatians were sinners above all the Galatians, um, because they suffered much things. And just going back to what uh, the, the comments that Brother Stevenson was mentioning that, you know, oftentimes we try to pinpoint um, our, the difficult days with, with, with God's punishment. And, and, and that oftentimes is not necessarily true. I think what I got from this passage of scripture was, was that we need to be thanking God that we weren't a part of the tragedy so that would give us time to repent. And which was um, the basis of this entire um, several chapters where it was says, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So while we are living in this, in this dark world and all of the things that 9-11 and COVID is, is, uh, uh, is taking place and, and obviously people are losing their lives, we just need to be thanking God that he's still long suffering and given even those that have not obeyed the gospel time to repent and even for ourselves when we fall short, uh, give us time to repent also because we know that no sin shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But I thought that was just a, a good segue to share that uh, with what Brother Stephen was mentioning. It's my comment. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I think that that's, that makes sense as well. So um, we appreciate it. Um, any other comments? Uh, all right, so we will move to verse 10. Uh, Brother Lloyd, are you there? Can you can you help us read verse 10? Mm -hmm. All right. Verse 10. Uh, verse 10. One second here. Uh, Brother Leslie. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm sorry, Brother um, Lloyd. I, I just wanted to finish my thought. It just came to me. And, and also, um, and what, what was um, taking place in, in this also, Luke chapter 13, was, was that we oftentimes pay a lot of attention to some of the larger tragedies. Um, and if we want to make, give some type of a spiritual uh, revelation about it, but yet we don't deal with the issues that we struggle with day to day, which is just as simple as buildings collapsing. Um, I'm not treating my, my family right or stealing or lying and doing all those things in Galatians chapter, I believe it's five or around 19. And so this, there's no greater sin, you know, because, you know, good people will go to hell and they're going to be bad people going to hell. But if we don't repent is, is really the basis of what I should have thought to finish to say is what I want to conclude my, my comment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. To add to Luke 13, three, you, you cited, I think uh, um, Acts chapter 17 is also very relevant Verse 30 and 31 says, in times of ignorance, God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has actually, you know, appointed a day in which he's going to uh, judge the old world in righteousness through the man, you know, whom he has appointed. That's Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you once again for that. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, Brother Lloyd, please, can you go ahead? Verse 10. Uh, yeah. Verse 10, the Bible says, I sent among you a pestilence after the manner of Egypt. I killed your young men with the sword and carried away your horses. And I made, your, I made the stench of your camp go up into your nostrils. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. All right. This is another trouble or punishment that God actually gives to them. We have plagues and war. Remember when the Egyptians were very stubborn and would not allow the Israelites to go. God actually gave them, I think, 10 plagues. Uh, and, you know, despite all of these things, they were still stubborn until at a particular point in time when Pharaoh had to, oh, okay, let them go. And even when he actually allowed them, he had to, you know, pursue them and all of that. Now, here is a similar reference or a reference to what had happened. It says, I sent among you a plague after the manner of Egypt. Your young men are killed with a sword. Along, sorry, along with your captive horses, I made the strange, the stench of your camps come up into your noseries, 
um, yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. Their men were killed, plagues came into their land, and you know they, they actually refused to go back to God. I think these people should have actually remembered what had happened in the past. I think they were not actually learning from the lessons of history, because if they do, they would not repeat the mistakes that, you know, that were made in the past. You know, the Israelites are fond of going back to sin, coming to God, going back to sin and all of that. So that's, that's, that's so terrible. And this is it. Despite all of this trouble, they did not repent. They did not come to the Lord. Any comments on that? Yeah, Brother Leslie, your point about they should have learned, and, you know, Paul says in Romans 15 and 4, you know, to we who are Christians, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, you know, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. And then Paul turns around and he also in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he uses the Old Testament, you know, Israel uh, wandering in the wilderness as an example as well in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse number, and I'll just start with verse seven if I could, Brother Leslie. He tells, Paul writes to them in 1 Corinthians 10, neither be you idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, rose up to play, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and 20,000. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. So he goes all the way back to the Old Testament. Neither murmur you, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. He says in verse 11, now all these things happen unto them for an example. And they are written for our yeah. admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. And so we, we are blessed to be New Testament Christian because we can, we can learn and live. You know, we don't have to live and learn you know, especially from the failures of uh, the Old Testament Israel. Right. Thank you. That, that's, that's right. That's right. So uh, we have that with us. And then that's, that's why we can actually learn from that. And uh, that's why we cannot throw the Old Testament away. People often say, well, we don't follow the Old Testament law, but why, why do we still read it? Why do we read it? We, don't, we can't throw them away because it has a purpose. And from the scriptures you've read, it shows that they are for our learning, the patience and comfort of the scriptures. Through them, we might have hope. So um, it's unfortunate that the, the children of Israel, you know, God killed them. The smell of, of the rotting uh, uh, our bodies corrupted the air that they were breathing in, yet these people did not actually return to the Lord. All right, let's look at verse 11. Um, Brother Jared, can you help us with that? Yes. I have overthrown some of you, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand. Plucked out of the burning, yet have ye not returned unto me, said the Lord. All right, thank you. Now, this is another um, um, punishment that or plague that God actually brought upon them and they did not repent. He says, I overthrew some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember someone and Gomorrah in the Old Testament? That was a very terrible statement. In fact, today, I don't know if it's a well, general thing everywhere, but it's a common thing here when people want to describe a corrupt nation. They say this nation is even as worse or even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. So Sodom and Gomorrah was a very worse nation that even Abraham was begging God, oh, let's just get, you know, a few persons. But, but you know, got to a point, the Bible says, the Lord rained fire from the Lord, you know, out of heaven. There were all kinds of immoralities, homosexuality and everything in Sodom and Gomorrah. So, you know, and God punished them. Here, God is saying that he sent among them a plague. Sorry, verse 11. He overthrew some of them as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And um, you were like a fire brand plucked from the burning, yet you have not returned to me. So, you know, God destroyed them, killed them, overthrew them, yet they did not return to the Lord. That's another 
uh, punishment. So these passages or these verses are just talking about the various punishment that God actually meted on the Israelites, but they did not return to him. And then we have two last verses there. I think we have someone who hasn't read. Okay, Sister Valera, can you help us with verses 12 and 13? I'll have to pass, my brother. Okay, say that again. I'll pass. Okay, okay. All right. Um, all right, Brother Green, can you help us with that? Yes, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to me thy uh, God, O Israel. For lo, he that formed the mountains and created the wind and declareth unto man what is his thoughts, that maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. All right. Thank you very much. Now, the last two verses is talking about God uh, is going to punish them even the more, despite the fact that they refuse to learn from all of the previous lessons that God has actually tried to teach them, uh, that God was teaching them. Um, you know, the various chastisements for Israel's sin didn't, it didn't actually move them. So God is saying he's going to bring more judgment upon them. Now, Israel is to prepare to meet the God of war in judgment. And you see certain things there that shows God's omnipotence and his omniscient nature. Um, he's omnipotent because he actually, you know, formed the mountains and actually creates the winds. Uh, uh, you see that there it says who declares uh, for behold who forms the mountain and creates the wind who declares to man what his thought is now that aspect tells us the omniscient nature of God because he knows the thoughts of man but you know man doesn't know the thoughts of another man that's another different thing so God knows what every man is thinking but you know that's not the same with man so that's why we say God is omniscient and then his omnipotent is all uh uh, you know, know all-powerful and all-knowing. So that's what we're talking about. And so the reason why he's all-knowing is because he declares to man what his thoughts are and makes the morning darkness who treads the high places of the earth. The Lord God of hosts is his name. So this is um, what we're basically looking at in the book of Amos chapter 4. We've seen how the women were not submissive and were oppressing the poor. Uh, you know, that was contrary to God's law. And we see how they were actually called, you know, sarcastically to come and worship, you know, in their in a, a, a place of worshiping idols. And then we see the other parts where God tells us these are the things that he has done to make them repent, but they have refused to repent. Well, in all of these things, we must learn that, first of all, we must always worship God according to his will. And then secondly, we must be willing to repent when we have actually been shown our sin. There's a song in our hymn, you know, we often sing that as an invitation song. It says, oh, prepare to meet your God. The first stanza says, careless soul, why will you linger? Wandering from the fold of God, why I hear you not the invitation? Oh, prepare to meet your your God. So uh, that's all we have for today on the book of Amos chapter 4. If we have any questions or comments, uh, we can actually bring them up. Thank you very much. Great teaching, preacher. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for tonight's lesson, uh, my, my brother and once again, we appreciate every opportunity that uh, we get to have you to teach. Great lesson. Do we have anyone that ha has any questions or comments concerning um, tonight's lesson or anything else that you have that you would like to bring to the group? All right.
right. If not, uh, I, I don't I don't know what was going on with your audio, Brother Stevenson. I was asking you about Monday. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm good. Yes, sir. I will do it. Okay. Amos chapter five. Yes, sir. Lord's will. Okay. Thank you, dude. Uh, also, don't forget, everyone, uh, Saturday night, six six o'clock uh, Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page. We'll have our open forum. Uh, I hope that you all can come and join us there. Any questions and comments or anything that you may have uh, that you would like to bring to the group, we'll do our very best to give you a Bible answer to any Bible questions that you may have. Um, with that being said, I'm going to ask once again, is there anyone that has any questions or comments concerning um, tonight's lesson or anything else you may have you would like to bring to the group? Hey, Brother Green, can we just, and whoever's going to close out, just keep Brother Lewis in prayer. We missed that, Brother, but he did mention that he and his wife were going to be traveling. So we're just going to pray for Brother Lewis if we could. No problem, Brother Stevenson. I'll just go ahead and ask you. To close us out with our prayer when that time comes. Um, I also want to say, uh, Brother Coffee, I, uh, Brother Leslie has this recording now, so I'm I'm asking him, if Brother Leslie, if you could share the recording with Brother Coffee, if you have his email address, because um, Brother uh, Coffee is having issues with the app that he uses to record the, uh, these lessons. So if you could share it with him. Um, that that'll be great, and he'll pass it on to any and all that that he normally sends them to. Um, with that being said, is there anyone that has anything at all that they would like to bring to the group? Anything at all? <laughs> 